Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're continuing our look at Blackheart Models, Universal Monster, Wall Hangers. A great series of uh, wall hangers from George Stevenson over at Blackheart Models. And the one up today is The Mummy. Beautifully, beautifully done. Captured uh, Boris Karloff in his small scene but iconic role as The Mummy. These are beautiful, beautiful kits to get. They hang nice in your room and they'll be one of the center pieces of your collection. Let's talk a little bit about what I did with this one today. He was uh, primered in automotive gray primer, a light gray primer that is. Then I brought out my trusty black acrylic paint and I just basically hand brushed, got a large brush and just hand piece, you know, did the whole thing in that black. And then he's ready for the building up the colors. For his bandages, many different colors went into that. I'm going to bring them out. We've got these four, or actually these five were responsible for bringing the bandages to life. First up, we uh, started with just a base coat of, which one was it here? We started with the Poisonous Plague Yellow, and just kind of misted it over the black. You can probably see it here in the fingers, and just kind of hit the bandages with them. And then, of course, over that, we uh, wanted to come in and start uh, building up different colors, so we come in with Old Wreck Rust. These are from the Badger Freak Flex line. And with that, you just start hitting the different bandages, give them a little bit of dirtiness in the fingers, hit heavy with the bandages, just follow all the tops of the folds, Everywhere you see it along the uh, arm part of the hand here, just keep hitting it with that old wreck rust. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start uh, shadowing that with washes, while well, in this case, transparent paints. You can obviously do this with a big brush and just some washes. Take your paint, mix it down with some uh, wind, windshield washer fluid or something just to the water. Just kind of mix it all up and just put it on. Let it sink in, wipe it off. I like the uh, quicker way for me is transparency. So again, Garage US Colors, we're up again. Transparent Raw Umber and Transparent Dark Brown. Those were used to start punching in the folds. Just build it in your shadows. Hit them a little bit heavier. The dark brown will give you that really nice dirty look. So just use that and start punching in everywhere on here. Hit a little bit in the fingers. Just uh, kind of just follow again the folds of the bandages and just uh, hit it pretty hard with that transparent dark brown. Then you want to come over with the transparent raw umber and kind of mist it over all of it. Just give it a general misting. It's going to bring it like a yellowish brown look to it. Just keep you know misting over then of course your process begins. Coming back in with the old rack rust, hitting highlights, coming in with the uh, the yellow, the uh, plague yellow, and hitting different highlights. Then, of course, back in with your transparency. You get what I'm saying. You're building up, you're, you're shadowing, you're building, you're shadowing, you're building, you're shadowing until you get what you're looking for. And then what I like to do with it after I get all that done is I'll come in with the transparent black, which is from Comart. Great color. I use this a lot. If you watch my videos, you know. And I like to just kind of mist the areas and maybe punch in some black, especially around the fingers. Make them a little bit dirty. As you can see, just kind of hit all the folds. There's a lot of detail in this thing. Jeff Yeager has captured a lot of detail. So just go ahead and just punch in the different shadows and then you'll uh, get exactly what you're looking for. And again, scratch that. This is not a Jeff Yeager. This is Mike Fliengo's sculpt, which he did a great job. So once you get done with that, you just want to come back in and hit a little bit of uh, highlights on the fingers. You know, I just come in with this uh, yellow arch and just kind of really hit it. You can see the uh, yellowish look you have here over the transparent brown, over the different colors that you've already built up. It's going to give you this look. And just kind of play with it a little bit. Go around and just kind of hit all the skin areas, if you will. And once you're happy with that, come back in with your transparent black 
and just kind of quiet it down a little bit. And that was his bandages. Uh, gives you this, to me, a dirty look and just gives that look of old because that's what this guy was, old. Now for his fingernails here, uh, that was just uh, building up uh, some washes and just a teeny bit of a highlight with a uh, poisonous plague yellow and then shading with the transparent dark brown to give it that dirty look. Now we're going to move up to the guy himself, the mummy. That was again over the black uh, using these same colors. Uh, a lot of the yellow orch was used just as a misting for the base uh, coat of the skin itself and then uh, lots of washes with the transparent raw umber, transparent dark brown, just kind of spray over, build up your shadows, back in with the yellow orange, and just go back and forth until you get the color that you're looking for. And it's uh, and that's where the transparent black comes in too. As you missed it, remember the walls, one, two, three, over the general area, you're gonna get that uh, quiet effect of bringing it all together but your colors are still showing through because it's a transparent paint. And when you use transparent black, it also gives you shadows, which is what I go for when I try to do something like this. So you just uh, keep building it back and forth. Uh, for his nose here, I did a little, I wanted to kind of go with the skin look, so I actually used a little bit of uh, Old Rack Rust in there and then uh, shadowed that down with some of the transparents. Uh, his lips himself, I kind of shot it with, uh, I don't have it out here, but it's um, transparent Mars Red from Jesse over at Garage US Colors. Just kind of misted that over his lips and then quick spray with transparent black gave me that look that you see there. Now for his eyes, uh, Bleach Bone Tan from the Badger Freak Flex line was used as the base color for the eyes. And then of course you draw on the pupil. They really don't show a whole lot on this one because remember the mummy had the droop eye. So for that I just came in and did my moons for the eye. You don't have to do the whole eye, it's not showing. And on this side it's real small, so just a quick moon. And then you decide in your eye color what you want to use, what color eye you wanted him to have. So what I ended up using for his eye color was the poisonous plague yellow. I just uh, kind of drew that in and uh, then I kind of took an airbrush, my uh, chrome from Badger, and I just kind of did a real light misting of it. Then of course you work in the black on the outer edges with your pastel, just take and kind of feather that in so it kind of blends and it's not a hard line. And then for the pupil, just came in with a straight black and just uh, kind of circled it in and then uh, feathered it out with that black pastel. Now for the bottom of his eye, which you've heard before I use a lot, is this uh, red oxide from Jesse over at Garage US Colors. And I always just take that and I hit the line right at the bottom of the eye. Just make that, you know, go a little bit heavy with it. It just gives you a nice color. And it just, uh, to me, it just uh, finishes off the eye nicely. Now for his hair, I wanted to kind of make it look kind of old, but I wanted it to stand out slightly from the skin. So that's when I uh, enlisted the uh, uh, Old Wreck Rust, and I just misted that over the black, and did just a uh, quick spray of transparent black, just to kind of tie it all together, which gives you a subtle change from the skin to the hair without just jumping out. But to me, it kind of just all blends together, and that's what you want to do. Take your uh, transparent black and just kind of hit a little bit heavier where the uh, hair meets the skin, just to give you that slight difference. Uh, not too distinct, but just something to blend the two together so it looks natural. Uh, blending is uh, something I struggled with early on, and I've learned, especially on you know, werewolves, uh, different flesh tones. If you look at your face, you know, when it goes to your hair, there's just a slight skin tone difference. That can be exaggerated, of course, when you're working on a monster. The same with shadowing. You can over, you know, over get a much deeper look, just go, go nuts. And then you can always tone it down with washes. Now, the one thing that I wanted to highlight on this, I'm trying to highlight like one thing, was the ring. And the ring, I tried something different. 
I wanted to stand out. Originally, I was going to go with like a ruby red. Then I thought, oh, green. Green would be sweet. Blue is my favorite color. Go Michigan. So what I decided to do was go blue. Go blue. So over that black, I came in with one of my favorite colors from that Freak Flex line, Afixia Blue. And I just airbrushed that over. Just uh, shot it a couple times. Uh, a little bit um, uh, lighter as you go around the edges. And then you're going to come in with your transparent black and just kind of go down a little bit. Just kind of slow it down. Then you come back in a little bit heavier with it. And then with a uh, real fine brush, I just hit all the lines where you see. And just kind of punch that in a little bit. And that was all I did with the ring. But I just like how you see everything and then boom. The ring just kind of stands out. His power. And there it is. Uh, for the uh, ring itself, that was just a copper uh, color. I just took that and I just dry brushed it over the black. And then of course, uh, when you you can tell sometimes with dry brushing, if you get too crazy, it's evident. And, and, and in the end, it really does wipe out the detail. So just, you know, put some paint on your napkin or whatever you use, get it where all the paint's off, and just lightly dry brush over, and it's like magic. It just comes to life. And of course, just quiet it down with your transparent black. And the transparent black also gives it a dirty look, an aged look, over the uh, gold. So once you have the gold on and you do all that, it's a boom. Then I just took some gloss, and I just glossed the uh, top of the ring, so it kind of stands out a little bit. Of course, the gloss was used on both eyes, so they look wet. And then, uh, of course, I dull coated the whole thing with Tester's dull coat before I put the gloss on. And then the gloss is the last thing you do. And then she's finished. And that is the mummy from Blackheart Models, currently available through George Stevenson. Can't recommend this series enough. If you haven't tried painting a wall hanger, you're missing loads of fun. There's just so much fun to be had. You can grow your toolbox, you can try new things, and your palette is huge. Great for working on eyes, great for working on dry brushing. It's just fun all the way around. And can't mention the awesomeness when you put them all up and they're just hanging there on your wall and the universal monsters are surrounding you. Does it get any better than that? So thanks again for stopping in today to Talking Models. I would appreciate if you subscribe today and join the family. Get on board, uh, get the word out, pass this uh, channel around, show it to your friends, show it to your wife, your kids. Yeah, we're PG. There's nothing ever going to be said on here that your kids can't watch. And maybe you can raise your kids to carry on this hobby when we're all gone. We all love this hobby. We've been gifted to paint and enjoy some relaxation when the world around us is closing in. So again, thank you for stopping in to Talking Models. May the Lord bless your day today.